Hello, seventh grade friends. Okay, so I got in trouble with the latex balloons for our Beheim Glow. And for block two and four, this is mainly for you because we're not gonna get a chance to be able to label this together in class. So I'm just gonna finish it up here. I'm kind of starting at the beginning too for some students that weren't here. It won't take long. And then we'll label it and then I'll tell you what to do, okay? But for everybody, you should take the globe home. If you didn't get a balloon, you're welcome to get one from me, and then you can do this at home, take it home and blow the balloon up, everything. Okay, so Martin Beheim, remember, <clears throat> a contemporary of Christopher Columbus. I'm showing you this because I want you to know why Columbus has confidence that he can sail west and arrive in the east, east being what we call Asia, India today, okay? so. This is the part of the globe that's gonna have everything we need. On the back side of this, on your balloon, is gonna be mainly Asia, right? And that's where we're gonna write information that you're gonna be able to use on your test because you can still bring something in for your test. You can't bring the balloon, but I'll let you bring pictures of what you made, okay, on that day. All right, so we started by making the Iberian Peninsula in Europe, that's where Spain and Portugal are. There's our Italian boot, there's the Balkan Peninsula, and then we're gonna make our way around. We're gonna have Africa here, something like that. There's Denmark, all the way up, Great Britain, Ireland. We have some islands here, some islands here. Well, that Africa looks really bad, doesn't it? And then remember, they thought the world was a lot smaller than what we know it is. So most of that's gonna be Asia on the other side, and of course, a mainly land world too, which it's not, it's the opposite. Here we're gonna have Asia, okay? And this right here is gonna be our sea of darkness, the great ocean sea. They thought that the Indian Ocean and the Atlantic were sort of one big ocean, okay? All right, we're gonna put a big island here for Japan. And then our Indies here, there are some big islands. Today it's Indonesia. They're just kind of thrown out there haphazardly. There's gonna be our Spice Islands later, okay? And that's kind of like where we left it when we were together and, and did this in class, all right? So now we gotta label it. And they thought the world at that time, they just knew of three continents they did not know about Antarctica, they did not know about Australia or the Americas, apparently. So they had, they knew about Africa, and we'll do this in a little bit of Latin in here. Africanus, Europa, and then we're gonna identify these islands. These are Canaries, and these are Azores, off the coast of Europe and Africa. They already knew about them by that time. That's why we're labeling them. And they're not even like close to Europe. They're like 800 miles away off the coast. They're pretty far out in the Atlantic. This here is Sipangu. We know it as Japan today. Up here is Cathay. That's China. And I'm gonna have a hard time fitting this here, but this is Moambar, which would be like the southeast part of what we call India today. So this is what Columbus is going on. He's right here, as you know, he's in Spain. So there's a little city, Palo, Spain, that he leaves from. And if this is what you think the world is like 500 years ago, you can kind of understand why he has confidence now. He heads south to Canaries on purpose. They resupply, and then they're gonna head straight west. So he heads this way, and then boom. And sure enough, now it's many weeks, it's about six weeks after they left here. It's a long time. His men were on the verge of mutiny by that time. This, it was like, you know, 42 some days without seeing any land. And, you know, you got ships that are filled with superstitious guys. They were always, of course, worried about these. We did this last time. Can't forget to make your sea monster, right? There he is, a little hump. Okay, that's not the best 
Let's change that mouth on that. There it is. Okay. All right. There's our sea monster. I've done better. Okay. So you have superstitious guys, but he does make it on October 12th, 1492, and that's going to change everything forever in this part of the world for sure, and even more so as time goes by. All right. So that's going to be your Beheim Globe, Spice Islands. Remember, that's where you find the nutmeg tree back then? The only place in the world he had a nutmeg tree? Okay. All right, so now the back side of this thing, this is where you're gonna label info, and this is what you can take a picture of the day you come in for your test. All right, here we go. Did you enjoy that close-up picture of me? Okay, let's see if we can do this right. Okay, so I'll put information up here. This is the back side now. And I'm going to start by putting 15th C. That represents 15th century. Remember, this is all about what did they know of the world in the 15th century. I'm not talking about the farmer in the middle of Europe who knows no better. These are educated people, people who've sailed, people who've studied this, OK? So three things we have to write down. Number one, they knew of three continents. Europe, Asia, remember most of the world was Asia, and Africa. They knew of one great ocean. They call it the Ocean Sea. It would, in Latin, it would be Mare, M-A-R-E. And then two thought, they thought the world was mainly land, like 70, 75% land, and of course the rest being water. We know it's the opposite, but remember we're looking at what they thought it was like 500 years ago. Three, they thought <clears throat> the world was smaller than what we know it is today. So this probably had, there was probably a lot of debate about this. Columbus is gonna be somebody who's thinking this, but there might've been others who were like, you know, Columbus, we think it's much bigger than, than you realize. And those people would've been right. Remember, those who said Columbus wouldn't make it, they weren't worried he was like gonna sail and then fall off like the world. That's not what they're worried about. They know the world's round. What they, were, what they said to Columbus was, the ocean sea is bigger than you realize, and you're gonna run out of food and water. That's what they said, that you're gonna die out there because you're getting it wrong. So there's probably debate about this, but that's, of course, what Columbus believes. All right, so that's the whole thing with Beheim's Globe. We should probably label this at the top. Beheim's Earth Apple is what they called it at the time. In German, Erdapfel. You never know if that might get, get you a little bonus on that one. Okay? And there you have it. Sorry we couldn't do that in class and finish it. Got to finish it at home. See ya.